It's off the court with Brady Sally. Welcome back into the program, everybody. He's Brady. I'm Joel. Welcome into what is bound to be the most exciting half hour of television here tonight. And that says a lot because Bob Ross, I think, is on next. So oh, there you go. If we can't beat Bob, we're in trouble. <laughs> that's a lot to live up to. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the week that's been for you guys. Uh, three games for you. You come out one and two, but mm -hmm. the one is on the back end of that, and you have seem to have righted the ship against Western Michigan. Well, I, you know, I don't know if we righted the ship. I, you know, I was telling somebody earlier in the week, you know, when you go through these streaks where, you know, you lose a couple, maybe you win a couple, it's usually never as bad as you think it is, and it's really never as good as you think it is. You know, the I look back at the, the Ohio game when we played really well, we made a bunch of shots. Honestly, we didn't play a whole lot different than we did against Toledo or Buffalo. We just made shots. Uh, our defense had the same breakdowns. Now, the difference with the back end of this with Western Michigan, I thought we made a real concerted effort to defend the right way, and uh, you saw a tremendous defensive effort against a really good all-conference level post player. Uh, pay off with a big win. Yeah, control the controllables is what I think you hear coaches talk about all the time. Making right. shots is out of your hands to some Absolutely. extent, and, and the defensive end is, is in your hands. Well, and, and as easy as it is to say, and coaches say it all the time, <laughs> to get it through to those kids where they really buy into the fact that, listen, you can't control those shots. You have to keep defending and rebounding. That's the hardest thing to do because Players are players. They want to make shots. They want to be the leading scorer. They want to be the one in the newspapers. And to get them to buy in and do all the dirty work, uh, that's when you get your special teams and, and teams like we had last year that go on some big runs. Let's start with uh, the Toledo game, which was the first one this week. And I think the key statistic from that game, they out-rebounded you guys 40-29. to 29, right. And that kind of dictates what we were talking about. Absolutely. you know, And, and I thought in that game, uh, and I haven't been able to say this much in, in my time here. I thought Toledo out-efforted us. They, they played harder. They wanted it more. They were on a two-game losing streak with us coming into their building. And uh, I thought they just played way faster, harder, stronger, tougher, uh, and willed themselves to, to a victory. And, and they had two seniors in Andola Dorch and, and Enma that uh, just kind of made the big plays. And uh, you can see Shelby there. It was a rough physical game. And... Uh, they, they took it to us, I thought, and, and their crowd helped. 3,600 people calling me names I've never been called before <laughs> in my life, if you can believe that. But that, that's what makes it fun uh, in college basketball is to play in that environment. 35-21 we saw there at the break. You come out in the second half, saw some Shelby Justice in the first, a little bit more of her in the second, and Brittany Carter gets to the bucket. You guys were 48% though in the second half, mm -hmm. so you made a run, it's just you dug yourself a little too deep early. And it w really was the story of both games at Toledo and against Buffalo. We dug ourselves a hole and spent the whole night playing out of it. And in both those games, we won the second halves and, and uh, righted the ship a little bit. But uh, you know, when you're on the road, your margin from error is very, very small. But you can see there, you know, we, we had it cut down to like four and, and uh, had ourselves a chance. and. Um, just didn't make the plays that it took uh, on the road against a team that was really inspired to make sure they weren't going to lose three in a row. Tried to keep it close there late. They helped off of Natalie Fontaine too, right. which got the bucket in the end one, and then Toledo with the steal to seal mm -hmm. things in the final seconds there, and that puts it away. A 73-61 final against the Rockets. That's a game that uh, is a difficult place to win at. You come home, you have another chance against them later on this season, mm -hmm. and in that in your building and, and with one game against them under your belt, maybe you like your chances a little better. Yeah, I mean, you know, we just got to get over that Toledo hump, you know, and, and to their credit, they're a program that has established themselves and, and have been one of the bell cows of this league. Um, you know, we got to get over that baloney. Uh, you know, it's, it's really nothing more than lore. And, uh, man, we, we just got to be better than that, and, and I think we are. Uh, and I think we learned that in the second half. We could play through some of that stuff and play against a crowd like that. And uh, we, we belonged on that, that court, but I, I don't know that we started the game that way. And that was probably just, uh, just enough to, to make it difficult on us. Mutual Bank leading scorers for the Toledo game. We start with Natalie Fontaine. That'll be a constant uh, through this program. 17 points, seven of those coming at the free throw line. You see the day for Brandy Woody as well. Also got good days from Brittany Carter with 13 and then Shelby Justice, who we saw a lot of in those highlights, 10 and four for you guys. You roll off of that into the Buffalo game, you come back home for that one on Sunday, and you mentioned it, very similar to the Toledo game in that you kind of dug yourself deep in the first half. You climbed out of it, you got yeah. within two, right. you just didn't have enough to get over the hump. Well, again, offensive sensitive. You know, we were missing shots, and, and they were playing zone, we were playing horse. I mean, we were out there just shooting horse shots. 
And I don't know if that messed with our psyche a little bit, you know, our shooters knowing that they were going to be playing against zone and now the pressure was on them to make some shots or what, whatever. And, uh, you know, but in those stretches, you got to be able to defend. And I, I was much more concerned with the fact that missing shots was leading to us coming down on the other end and having some real defensive breakdowns and, and really atypical of, of the way that our teams have played over the past couple seasons to, to be that unfocused when it came to the defensive end, I thought really, really ended up getting us. We mentioned Buffalo starting out hot. It was a 10 nothing run for Buffalo to start out in this game as well. And uh, then you guys started to get going in the first maybe 10 minutes after that goes by, but you're already down 17-2 at that point when Natalie Fontaine hits a couple of buckets. And then Shelby Murder uh, gets left open, hits a big three for you guys as well. Again, you started to crawl back into it, but uh, as we see at the break, down 39-26, a, a long road uh, to hoe. Here's the Shelby murder triple. They leave her open in the zone, and she can knock him down. Well, and Shelby's starting to play better. You know, last night she was our leading scorer going into the half, had eight points, and, and is really becoming uh, uh, an offensive threat for us and somebody we can put in there that, that we can count on a couple buckets, and, and that's big coming off the bench. Natalie with 13 first half points for you. You see the halftime score as well there. Again, 39-26. We go into the second, down 13 here after Fontaine gets to the rack. And uh, you can see her kind of slicing through the zone. That's not really uh, what people should be able to do against the zone defense. Well, with the way they play it, we knew uh, how they were going to match up as we threw it into the high post. And it really, they, they match up man to man in that situation. And so we knew she could catch it and rip it. And then you saw us, we, we used her a little bit in the high post, we used her a little bit down on the block and kept moving around in those situations. They had a heck of a time stopping her in that zone. There's the drive for Natalie Fontaine, the and one, and then Brandy Woody with a steal and a run out here. This gets it into a five point game with just 22 seconds left, but again, not enough to overcome it in Buffalo. Victorious 73-69, the final there. And one of the things at the end of that game too, it's a heck of a job for UB, they hit nine of their final 12 free throws in the mm -hmm. final two minutes. So there's a team that was put in a situation where they could have given it back to right. you and they held on. Well, and again, you know, you, you play the percentages. I thought early on in that stretch where we were fouling, we fouled the right kid, you know, percentage wise, and she knocked down some big ones. Uh, and then as it gets closer to the end of the game, you got to foul anybody to, to try to uh, extend the game. Unfortunately, uh, we fouled the Sharky kid who, who definitely had a big, big night for them. And, and uh, like most seniors, they, they step up and knock down big free throws. We saw a lot of Natalie Fontaine in those highlights. She is our mutual bank leading scorer for that game. A career best 30 points for Natalie Fontaine. She got a third of it at the free throw line. Brandy Woody had the 10. We mentioned Shelby Murder with eight. And that's a really big emergence for you guys as you start to get the freshmen really into things. We've seen bright spots from Renee Bennett, from Jill Morris, and now you get Shelby Murder into the mix and you start to grow that freshman class. Yeah, there's no question. I, I think all of those young ladies are starting to really come into their own a little bit. Jill, uh, I, I think in her own mind, is struggling a little bit and we got to get her out of that, but clearly she's a weapon. Uh, Renee Bennett, I think everybody sees and, and at times makes everyone pull their hair out because she's not <laughs> going 20 and 10 every night. But, you know, last night's game, and um, it, we'll get to that, I mean, you know, she had a chance to have 10 points and, and miss some free throws, but played a lot more active. But Shelby, uh, being able to knock down three stretch defenses, we can put her in at the five with her size at 6'3", and, and people aren't used to guarding her out there. And then she's starting to finish around the bucket that she wasn't doing early in the season. Yeah, that's not a weapon a lot of people have in this game, is somebody 6'3", right. who can play on the perimeter like that. And, and you've got a couple of them. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it, it's nice. And, and that's kind of been my bread and butter a little bit through my careers. I like big, I like long. I like going out and being the biggest team on the floor, and, and I think we're getting there. Uh, and, and through the next few recruiting classes, I think you'll see our size increase. Western Michigan was the final game of this week, and Coach, as you mentioned, this was the best performance of the week for you. Mm -hmm. And let's start on the defensive end. Miracle Woods, one of the best post players in the MAC, plays four minutes, three fouls in the first half. Yeah. Did a heck of a job on her. Well, and, and you know, it, it was a dream scenario where she gets into foul trouble. And, I mean, literally had two fouls a minute and a half into the game. Um, one on the offensive end, one on the defensive end. And, and uh, you know, our kids really were focused and locked in to how we had to defend her. Um, they, they're really, uh, uh, Western Michigan is very, very predictable in terms of where they're going to try to throw the ball, as we are. We're going to get it to Natalie, they're going to get it to Miracle. Uh, and, and so our kids were really locked in in what we had to do to try to keep it out of there. Uh, I thought Katie Murphy, Shelby Murder, Renee Bennett, Natalie, Haley, 
those kids did a tremendous job guarding the post last night. And uh, you saw when we're focused and we play with a purpose how good we can be. You mentioned Katie Murphy. Let's start with Katie Murphy to kick things off here at the beginning of the Western Michigan game. Take a look at the first half highlights. You guys trailing early. It's 3-2, to two, but you go inside. There's the lob. That works so effectively for you guys. Yeah, and, and again, uh, just great ball movement and uh, cleared their help out. And uh, uh, one thing you saw there with Natalie driving that lane line, they did not come off our wings and help very much last night. And because of that, you'll see the Brandy Woody drives. You'll see Natalie get into the rim a little bit. Um, that's a little bit atypical of, of what we're used to seeing, but they did not want to come off of our shooters and let us shoot open shots. And uh, I, I respect them for that because we have been making those, and even though lately we haven't, but uh, you can see there just what we were talking about, Shelby Murder stepping out and hitting a big three there. But there's that lane line drive where they didn't want to really come off those wings, uh, and we were able to get it to the rim over and over. Halftime score, 23 all. Brandy Woody made it a 23-20 game with that last shot there. So a lot of back and forth in the first half. In the second half, you guys fall down. Western opens on an 11-1 run. Then you get a technical. Mm -hmm. Take me from there. Well, I, I think, you know, it, again, we were we were struggling to put the ball in the basket a little bit, uh, you know, and, and but we kept defending. You know, we didn't let it get away from us. We, we kept grinding and, and defending and doing some things. You see some missed free throws here and there, but uh, a huge offensive rebound. And the neat thing with that shot Britt hit, I kept telling them in the timeouts, guys, if you'll keep defending and rebounding, we're gonna make a couple shots and we're gonna go on our run. You can see there where they're charging a three-point shooter, she rips it by them, and uh, Shelby gets it to the rim. A little bit of excitement there from roommates, that's always fun. Here's a great call Ryan made. Um, Ryan said, coach, run twist, run twist. We ran twist and shot a layup. So um, it was a true team effort, but uh, the kids stuck with it last night. They were really bought in. You can see Brandy was the Brandy of old, man. She was getting it to the rim and she was all over the floor. Um, just a, a one-man wrecking crew on both ends. Here she just rips it, drives it, goes and lays it up. And uh, uh, we really executed this game away. We, I thought we executed great down the stretch, ran our motion down to the shot clock. You can see five seconds on the shot clock, we're shooting layups at the end. And that's the way you win basketball games is executing down the stretch. You went on a 10 to one run to finish that thing off. Uh, that gave you the lead for good off that free throw and the kick out mm -hmm. for the Carter uh, three-pointer. And then you had 10 points off turnovers, too. We saw the steal by Brittany Carter, mm -hmm. 10 to nothing points off turnovers in the second half. So you took advantage there. But let's go to Brandy Woody. Mm. The job that she did, you said Brandy Woody of old. She's yeah. had her struggles this right. year. She goes for more than 20. She also doesn't turn it over. Right. Huge. And, and I think if you ask Brandy, she's way more excited about the goose egg and the turnover department than she is anything else. You know, And, and really, if you look at it, Last three games, 15, 10, 21, she's starting to play better. Now, she sprained her ankle in practice uh, right before the Buffalo game, had to be carried off, and, and really didn't know if she was going to be able to go. Um, but she, she, the true warrior that she is, she gutted it out, uh, and, and she's still hobbling around, you know. And, and, uh, but she's a tough, tough kid, and, and honestly, I think when she's got a few of those trophies, the sprained ankles, the, the bloody lip, and all those kind of she things. She kind of plays better. I, I agree with you. You know, and, and uh, not that I, I would ever wish that on any player, <laughs> but uh, that kind of focuses her in and kind of gets her in her element, uh, which is just that junkyard dog type of mentality. And boy, she had it last night. Mutual Bank leading scores, of course, headlined by Brandy Woody. She had 21 points, made six buckets for the cards, also seven rebounds to throw in there. Good day for Natalie Fontaine as well, although. Compare that to the 30 points. You guys are able to respond when Nat doesn't get 30 points. She gets nine. Brandy steps up. You can get it from different places. Yeah, and, and you know, Natalie didn't play bad. I thought they did a good job. They played underneath of her, and every time she tried to post up, they pushed her out of the paint and really had her out of her comfort zone. I thought they had a good plan and, and really put a lot of effort into our three-point shooters and Natalie, which opened up Brandy, which opened up. You saw Katie on a lob, and, and some, you know, Renee was pretty active in the post. Shelby Murder was pretty active down there. Um, and we've got some capable kids out there. And, and uh, um, but when it mattered, Britt hit a big shot. Brandy got it to the rim. Natalie hit, had some big plays there down the stretch. And that's what uh, your, your better players have to do for you to win big games. You mentioned three-point shooters. Let's move on to uh, one of them. Shelby Justice joining us here for our player spotlight this week. A player who's been really good for you guys from behind the arc. She's mm -hmm. increased that, and we'll talk about that with Shelby a little bit uh, through her time here at Ball State. But our conversation started with Shelby Justice's high school days at Rushville and her time as an Indiana high school all-star. 
it's always a great experience to get to play with like the best players in the state in your class and just getting to spend the week with them and just see how hard they all put or the time in to be the best that they can be and what it takes to play at the next level. So I got to experience that before I got here to Ball State, so that was pretty cool. Was it cool playing in some of those venues too? I think you played a game at what was then Conseco Fieldhouse. Yeah. As a high school kid, you're yeah. playing on that stage, that's gotta be kinda neat. Oh yeah, it was huge and we were playing the Kentucky All-Star, so it was even bigger because it's such a big rivalry game. So it was just a great atmosphere to play in. One of the other teams you played on you played in the Hoosier Reunion All-Star Classic, oh, yeah. too. That was on Hoosier Gym's floor, so that's where, I mean, and, and I think you were on the Hickory team is how yeah. they did that. What's it like to wear a Hickory uniform on the Hoosier Gym floor and, and play in a game? It was awesome. Like, I don't, I really don't know how to even explain it, but um, it's just a cool thing how we got to, like, react it, and, like, we were there in the actual gym where they shot it, so that was really cool. And, we were like in the locker rooms, what they showed in the TV or the movie, so that was really cool too. Did anybody pretend they were Jimmy Chitwood and like recreate the final seconds of that game? Oh, no. <laughs> it was kind of a blowout, so we really didn't have to do that. But Do you have any Hoosier basketball memories? Like you talk to Audrey Spencer, your director of operations, and she'll always talk about when she was a high school student or even before that, she grew up just shooting threes in her backyard on a court that her dad had made too large, which was maybe why she was such a great three-point shooter, shooting in a barn. Yeah. Do you have any kind of Indiana-esque basketball experiences like that? I mean, just getting outside and shooting on the little hoop that your grandparents or your dad put up, that's about it. So, I mean, just the basic basketball hoop in the backyard. We have a picture that I want to take a look at. Um, and it, it, shows you before you even got to Ball State, has all of the jerseys that you wore um, when you were in high school. And can we recount this here? I mean, this is before you ever got to Ball State and you've got the Ball State t-shirt on. What are all of these for? Um, well, uh, <laughs> it started out with, I, I was like, I think it was fourth grade. <laughs> it was my first one up there. And then it just um, goes up. And those are the AU clubs that I played in and then my high school jersey and then Ball State, of course, my college choice. So, <laughs> When you first got to college, what was that like? And I guess you talked about the Indiana All-Star experience. Did that help you make that transition? I think a little bit, but I mean, it's still a huge transition. Just the pace of the game, just the girls being a lot stronger and bigger than you are pretty much. So just getting into that and just, oh, I, I don't know, just getting into it really. But. When you got to college, I think it's an interesting statistic of perseverance. It took you six games to hit your first shot. Yeah. You started one of 26. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> what are you, are you thinking to yourself at that time, like, what did I get myself into? Yeah. I was definitely, like, down on myself. And then I remember, I think it was at Evansville when I hit my first three-pointer, and the whole bench started just, like, standing up and cheering for me. But then things got better, and I have started getting more confidence in myself. So. What's happened over the course of three years from that and you finished 23% from three as a freshman to now as a junior, 35%, you're one of the better three-point shooters on the team. Walk me on your, your journey in college of how you've gotten better. Um, I think I've just developed more confidence in myself and also getting in the gym and shooting a lot more than I did when I was a freshman because I didn't know that that's what it took <laughs> to, to get to that next level. So. Basketball aside, when you're all done here at Ball State, I know you're a nursing major. Hmm. What do you want to do after college? Um, well, I hope to get my nursing <laughs> degree, of course. <laughs> and I, my dream would be to work at Riley. I want to work in the Peds area, so that's what I really want to do with my life after. What is it about that that interests you so much? I just love little kids. I love working with them, and I don't know. I just my passion. We did some superlatives with the team before the season started. I'm sure you remember those. Uh, yeah. and, um, <laughs> some of the girls, we, we asked who the smartest on the team was or who was most likely to be president. Two people got votes. It was you and Dr. Murder. Yeah. It, it was the two Shelbys. Yeah. Um, what is it about, about you in school? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I've worked hard since I've been in high school to have my grades up there. So, I mean, I just, I guess, transferred it because it's a big deal to me to have that good GPA or so. And hopefully it leads into the right spot and uh, yeah. you wind up at Riley. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby, best of luck. Thanks for stopping by, all right? Thank you. She's very quiet, but kind of a like quiet assassin. Uh, she, she's she got that, that soft exterior, but yeah. she can pull a 
Pull a couple punches, pull a couple tricks. I tell you what, she gives me a harder time uh, <laughs> than most others on the team. She, she's she got some barbs and her sarcasm is is uh, is such that I really appreciate it. We, we have fun coaching her. She, she's a good kid. You can see just personifies student athlete, you know, and takes her, her schooling very, very serious. And, and for me, it's easy to give her that leeway. You know, she misses some practices and does some stuff because I know where her head is, and, and when she's with us, it's with us. When she's in the classroom, it's with the classroom. Uh, and she really has her priorities straight, and uh, a lot of fun to be around and, and uh, a lot of fun to coach. Let's move from the current Cardinals to the future Cardinals. You have three players signed next year to mm -hmm. NLIs, so we can talk about them in recruiting we rules. We're going to start this week with Brianna Simon, who comes from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That'll be your second Wisconsin player in as many years. 5'6 guard for you, she runs the point, really good leadership ability, and I know the quote from you in the release was, she is quick on quick. Yes. What does that mean? Well, a lot like you, Joel. Very very quick, very athletic. <laughs> She's not very yeah. fast. Okay, okay. Um, maybe not then. Uh, now, Bree, Bree is uh, lightning quick. I mean, can really motor, uh, can get it to the rim. Great setup type point guard uh, and leadership abilities that, that you would dream of as a coach. Uh, you know, she's somebody that uh, I've had my eye on for three or four years uh, through recruiting this program uh, with the Wisconsin Playground and very, very excited to get this young lady. And, and she's somebody, I tell you, you know, the, the fans would love if they could have heard when I offered her a scholarship and, and the excitement she wanted to be a Ball State Cardinal. Yeah. Uh, from the set, and uh, there, there was no question that, that we got the one we wanted and, and the right one, and, and we look forward to her coming in and running this team for a long time. Two more Cardinal recruits to get to over the uh, course of the next couple of weeks. We go from that, though, to coaches. It is this edition of Team Time. I would probably, I've never seen any of them play, so I don't know. I think Rachel, uh, especially a lot last year, she used to play against us in practice and she can still block my shot. Probably Audrey, just because she still got her J. She can make that three. <laughs> Audrey is the best player because she can still drain it from downtown. Probably Rachel, just because she's a post player like myself, and she's always just uh, has great advice. Um, definitely Audrey. She can still drain threes like crazy. The best player is Ryan. He's so fast. I really like Ryan. He's he's a good he's a good one. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> he can't do anything wrong. No more running for Natalie Fontaine. No, no question. Clearly, <laughs> Natalie is the smartest player we have, and we'll get plenty of playing time. <laughs> You've got a great staff, though, all kidding yeah, aside. They, they've been great players. They have great basketball histories, and, and they bring a lot to this program. I, I tell you, you know, one of the, the lucky points in my career is, is the staffs that I've had and, and the people that I've worked for, even back in my Eastern Illinois days, you know, uh, and, and now here to have Rachel, who played for me, uh, and is almost like another daughter. Uh, and, and then Audrey, you know, she, she was a holdover that everybody told me that they, they thought I should keep. And, and man, I'm glad I listened for once in my life. Uh, to bring Ryan, who I've known for so long and um, is a close friend, along with uh, a really good coach. And then Rika, um, to bring her back on, on board has, has been just a blessing. And, you know, I, I would put my staff up against not only anybody in this league, but anybody uh, around. Uh, we, we've just got a very strong coaching staff top to bottom, and, and uh, it makes my job all the more easier. It's a great mix of personalities, too. A lot of <laughs> basketball smarts, but a really great mix of people. Well, and, and the greatest thing is I think we have fun uh, in our offices, on the buses. Uh, we like to be around one another. Um, it's nothing uh, to uh, hook up on a weekend or or go to dinner and, and to spend time that we really don't have to with one another. And when you've got a staff like that, that, that genuinely enjoys being around one another, it's easy to come to work every day and it's hard to even call it work. A lot of prep over the next couple of days as you guys continue play here in the Mid-American Conference as well. Kent State comes up next and I know that's one that's very near and dear to your heart, mm -hmm. to Ryan's heart. Both of you guys come from Kent State and this will be the second meeting between these two teams this season. You guys got the first one 55-31 here at Worthen Arena. 
Kent's a team that's struggling as of late, has lost 11 consecutive games, but anytime you go on the road, it's always difficult. Well, you know, for us, it, it has really very little to do with who we're playing, and it's more about how we're playing. So, you know, going to Kent, that's going to be the first time I've been back there since I left um, in, in 02. And uh, so for me, it'll be a little bit nostalgic. Uh, but, you know, the culprits are different there. You know, the, my mentor is no longer there. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the people that were in administration are no longer there. Uh, so, you know, it's just going to be business as usual for us. And, and we've got to go there and, and play against a really good defensive team. You know, they have to muck it up to try to be in a game. Uh, they did last time when they were here, and, and so we're going to have to figure out ways to score and still be able to defend them. It's at seven, or it's on Sunday, not mm -hmm. at seven o'clock. It's at Sunday, and then Thursday the Cardinals come back home. That is at seven o'clock. It's Ball State and Central Michigan in the next home game, so don't look too far. Uh, but you, you've got a really good opponent coming into Worthen Arena, and that's going to be a long week for you guys getting ready for the chips. Who'd you say we play? The chips. I didn't know that. So Kent State's what <laughs> Kent we're Kent State about. first. Yes, sir. Kent State comes up first, then Central Michigan. That game is at home, though. So if you're in Muncie, uh, you can grab your tickets. And uh, join us at Worthen Arena for Ball State women's basketball. Kent State first. We'll talk about the chips next week. Off the court with Brady Sally.